Hello everyone, this is another Physics 30 example set. This one is from Lesson 8 and Unit 3. This is going to be to do with Lenz's Law, or what we call electromagnetic induction. That is to say that there is a induced force or an induced interaction by the movement of, of something in the system. So let's take a look at these examples and hopefully it will become a bit more clear. Okay, so we have um, we have a conducting rod uh, in the middle here. So hopefully we can see this is a rod, conducting rod, and it's laid on top of a circuit. Now, if this rod wasn't laid on top, the circuit would not be complete. So in, in effect, the circuit is completed by the positioning of the rod. So this would be a complete circuit. But what's interesting is that we can move this rod... Um, left or right, which creates movement, and that's going to create some situations that we need to think about. We are, as usual, always talking about perpendiculars, so perpendicular fields relative to the length of the wire and the movement of the the objects. So we're going to be using our hand rules, and then most importantly with this and the thing that a lot of people get wrong is that now we're dealing with a motion. So this V represents the velocity. Lenz's law tells us that the motion is going to be opposing. It's opposite to the force. So the force is going to oppose this motion, which kind of makes sense if you think about it, because if the force went in the same direction as the motion, you would be getting some energy for free. And that doesn't seem to make sense. So by putting some energy into this, we're going to get some resistance from the system. In other words, this is not what happens. We do not get the force uh, going in the same direction as the motion. We will always, Lenz's law says that we will always get it in the opposite direction. So the... Um, the force acting on this this uh, conductor here, the force that this will experience, if we were to move it this way, whilst it's in a uniform magnetic field, the force must be opposite. So if the velocity is going to the right, or the motion is going to the right, then the force magnetic is going to be acting on the metal rod this way. And now it's the time where we get our hand rules going because we're asked to determine the direction of the induced electron flow around the circuit. Well, the circuit's here. This is the circuit. The question is, which way does it go, clockwise or counterclockwise? So here we have to kind of imagine our hand rules. Of course, we're going to use our left hand because we're dealing with electrons. That's negative. And our thumb is what we're looking out for. We're told that the force has to be to the left. So we need to get the palm of our left hand directed to the left of the page. We also have the magnetic field going into the page. So this would be our fingers now going into the page. And if you're doing this while you're watching the video, which you should be, this shows you that your thumb is now pointing directly down. So in the wire, the electrons are going to go down, which means they're going to keep going this way and all the way around the circuit in a clockwise direction. So in this case, the electrons are induced in the current clockwise. Sorry, induced in the circuit clockwise. Okay, let's look at example B. Um, slightly different scenario this time. We are given an X and a Y. And we, there's no circuit, but what would happen is that you would have an accumulation of charge. So we need to figure out which way the electrons would travel or which, which, which way they would feel, uh, which way they would be induced. In other words, the current would be induced. And then we're saying whether they would accumulate at X or Y. Since they have nowhere to go, they're just going to accumulate. So same principle, we, we say that the motion is to the left. And again, remember Lenz's law, don't get this wrong. Lenz's law is that if the motion is to the left, the force experienced by those charges is going to be... You're right, that's it. I heard you. It's to the right. It's 
opposite. So there's the force. So now we're going to get our hand rule out again. And we're going to get the palm of our left hand because we're interested in the electrons. The electrons are really what we're thinking about in terms of the movement of charge. We're using our left hand. The palm is going to be to the right side of the page now. Now we're looking at a magnetic field that's coming out of the page. So we have to have our fingers pointing upwards out of the page. And then once again, we can see that the elect our, our thumb is now pointing downwards. So the electrons are going to move this way. That's the direction of the current. And so what's going to happen is we're going to get an accumulation of negative charge at the Y, which means we're going to have an accumulation of, ne of positive charge at the X. Okay, so here's another ex interesting example. Um, we have a uniform magnetic field. Hopefully you can see all of these crosses are going into the page. So our magnetic field isn't going to change. But what we have here is a loop, a conducting loop. And we're just going to gradually move this loop through the magnetic field. To begin with, position A, it is just entering the magnetic field. So we're going to assume that the part of the wire loop that's not in the field, we can discount this from our uh, analysis. At part B, now we have to think of the whole wire in the, in, the, in the magnetic field. And then as it's leaving the magnetic field, we're going to discount the bottom part of the loop from our analysis. And we need to say what's happening at each position. So let's go ahead. We're using Lenz's law here. We're going to say that, well, Lenz's law is the that the the motion or the the force experienced by the charge is is going to be the opposite or the force experienced yeah in the wire essentially is going to be the opposite direction to the motion. So that's that's the direction of the force. Let's label that F M. We're going to get our hand rules out here. We're going to put the palm of our hand to the top of the page. And the magnetic field is going into the page. So this leaves our left thumb pointing towards the left on this wire. So I'll use red here to show that. This is the direction of the electrons. Okay, so if we were to do the same thing on the, on the side wires... If we were to get our lenses law going on this, well, we we can apply it, I guess, only to tiny little areas within the wire. In other words, le electrons are going to move just ever so slightly across the wire. They're going to accumulate on the left-hand side of this wire. But that's not going to have an effect on the whole uh, circuit. The only thing that's going to have a significant effect is this very big movement of lots of electrons in the bottom side of this wire. So this net effect is going to create a, a current. It's going to create a circuit. In other words, we can say that in this first example, electrons are going to move clockwise. So we're going to have clockwise uh, induced current. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the second scenario. Uh, well, the, the first bit to analyze this bottom wire is going to be the same, isn't it? We can go ahead and do the same analysis. We can say that on this wire, the force is going to be opposing the motion, which means the electrons have to go towards the left along this wire. We're going to completely discount any lenses effect Lenz's law effect on the sides. So then we come to the top wire, which we now have to consider because this is now also in the magnetic field. And we can do the same analysis. We can say in this wire, the motion is down, which means the force is going to be up. And then the current is going to be once again to the left. And take a look at this. These are going to be the same. This induced current is the same as this induced current. And look, they actually end up cancelling each other out. So there is no net current in this setup. There is no current. OK. 
Okay, hopefully that's clear. Then we come to the last example, and it's pretty straightforward. Once more, we've got a wire to analyze that's in the magnetic field. So we can go ahead and, and say that if it's moving downwards, the forces are going to be up. And we've already established with our hand rules that if that's the case, the electrons in this part of the wire are going to go this way. And the bottom part of the wire, well, that's not in a magnetic field, so you're not going to get any motion there, which means we can think about this as a current that's going to go this way, which we would say is counterclockwise. So that's how we're going to describe this last scenario. This is going to be a counterclockwise induced current.